Brandon and Jenna Hilliard. We are excited to be here and present on our lunar lander control. So we think this could really revolutionize how we stabilize future landers on the Moon and Mars, but also maybe help right now with the SpaceX rocket. SpaceX rocket. So we just wanted to talk with you maybe a little bit about how we modeled this and how we implemented the control. To better get an idea of how this would work, we decided to use a lunar lander rover game built into MATLAB to best model and to control our system. So we set out to play and win the lunar lander. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our model, we um, had our control variables give you the position of the little lunar lander and we wanted it to get to the landing pad that would randomly generate every time we played a new game. So our we had three manipulated variables, they were acceleration, angle, and thrust. And um, to use all these together, we created a discrete PID control. Um, and in a little graphic, you can see like we had our X set point the entire time. And with that, we knew what acceleration we wanted. And then using those, we put set points for our angles and our thrust, and then use those to find our actual acceleration, which gave us or put us to the position. Um, and the equations we used, it was basically just physics for the most part. Um, the A is the acceleration, the S P stands for set point. Um, our error function was just the set point of the lander pad that we wanted to get to and then subtracted from the actual position of the lunar lander. Okay, and so we just wanted to demonstrate Those are the Martians attacking. There we go. Okay, that's a bad first time, but we'll go. Mm -hmm. okay. So, as you can see, our lander is able to turn and then adjust so it does not overshoot the platform and then stay in the air itself. So really, it's measuring the set point of the platform, the current location of the spacecraft. It outputs what we need acceleration to be. The needed acceleration then outputs the angle control, which will adjust the angle and the thrust to get the needed acceleration. <laughs> so we've been able to get it to a lens every time, which is impressive, really awesome. Even when you try and control it yourself. Yeah, so if I tried to turn it right now, it would adjust for that. Wow, you should have played that. They had off my Looks like we're using a lot of fuel. What you talking about? So, so to tune it, um, we didn't really have a process equation, so we just kind of did rudimentary. We made our tau i really big so that the i integral of the PID controller didn't really affect it, and then our tau d really small. And we adjusted our k, our gain value, kc, and so we got the timing to be kind of where we wanted to be. And then we increased our tau d, which had a huge effect because when we first started doing it, it was like the spaceship would start and then it would just go boom and just zoom right off the screen. So, <laughs> like, we like finally increased our tau d enough, it stopped oscillating and just kind of did that really easy go right to the set point. And then the integral, the tau i value, it helped it to go to the center of the platform as opposed to like right on the side. And then we just assumed for our angle and our stress k values that uh, they were one, just to simplify. And you can see the position gets there every time, and then the next one. The acceleration is kind of wobbly, but it gets there, and it's nice. And the angle one, you can see, it kind of goes back and forth at the very end. And that's just because we only had increments of high 64 that they could change, or that they, the spacecraft could change. And so it kind of wobbled at the end a little bit. And then this is the thrust. You can see since our k-value was 1, um, we assume that the thrust would just immediately go to the set point. So it gets its exactly the set point. 
Okay, then really quick, optimize all recommendations for future projects to optimize fuel consumption and maybe the flight paths and uh, maybe gradually approach it and a wide set point as well. And so, any questions?